Hello and welcome to a Harlow Penguin tutorial. I'm your host, Norm. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Z-Pass on Blender. And what better way to do that than to blow up a planet? Let's take a look at an example. So as you can see, a Z-Pass is a way to composite CG elements with other footage. Without the Z-Pass, the CG looks like it's either on top of or behind the other footage. It doesn't look like it, it's integrated. So to start off with, I have the planet already created and already set to explode. You can download this blend file on harlapengrin.com. A Z-Pass is a black and white version of the render. It tells the compositor the distance from the camera to an object. Foreground objects close to the camera are white, while background objects far from the camera are black. So how do we set up a Z-Pass? To start off with, click on the camera and click this little camera icon. And in, under Display, click Limits. This line is intended to show the clipping distance. What that means is it shows the elements in the scene that are being rendered versus those that are ignored during the render. We are going to use this for two purposes. One, to make sure that, that all of the pieces of the planet are within the, the clipping area. And the second is to use this to see what is the range that we want to calculate for our Z-Pass. And in this case, let's go forward through this. And as we can see, we have plenty of distance. Let's look at it from the top. Plenty of distance to the edge of the clipping. And in fact, we can probably bring this in a little bit because we don't need to render too far past that. All right, so now we see that we start at point one. That's this area right here in the camera, this yellow line. And we go all the way to the edge here, which is 58.3 Blender units. So this will be our, our guide for how much differentiation in Z-Pass we want to render. Again, the way the Z-Pass works, objects that are around here would be considered, would be white in the Z-Pass, while objects very far from the camera would be black, and everything in between would be a shade of gray. Now that we know the approximate distance, let's set up the nodes that give us the Z-Pass. So I will split this switch to node editor and I'm going to select this picture icon which is a compositor use nodes to generate the, the Z pass we are going to use this Z node but if we were to simply connect that to the image and render it we would end up so first of all, when you click render, it will render the normal image. And then the Z pass. You'll see that it's pure white. And the reason for that is the output from Z is actually in Blender units. So anything that is beyond one Blender unit from the camera would be pure white. In which case, everything in our scene is at least one Blender unit away from the camera. So everything shows up as white. We need to scale that down so that it's between 0 and 1, which is the range between black and white. So what we are going to do is we, we are going to add a node. We're going to add a vector map range. And we will take the Z node 
input it into value, and we are going to map the range from min to max. So the minimum distance we want to be zero, to map to zero, the maximum distance we want to map to one. And this is where we can use our clipping numbers. So we can start in this case at zero for now, and we can map all the way to 58.3. And even if we take that and input that, now suddenly we see pieces that are showing up. However, right now this is flipped from the way that we want it. So right now it's showing pure white as farthest from the camera, while in this case gray or, or black would be closest to the camera. So we are going to add a node, color, invert, and we'll put that in here. Perfect. There is an alternative way that you can do this as well, is if you add a converter, color ramp, and see it's black on the left, white on the right. Let's flip those, go from value, and image, and that has the same effect. So let's render, let's render a little bit more interesting view because in this, in this frame, all of the pieces are really spread out. Let's bring it in closer. And in this case, we have a lot more pieces that are being rendered. And hopefully we will see a, a better variation So more pieces and more distance between the pieces. Great, so now we have a Z-Pass image. How do we actually use it? Well, to start off with, let's save our Z-Pass. And to do so, I wanna change the color depth to 16. I will explain in a minute why we need this to be 16. An image, save as image and plant, for my case, Planet Z Pass. Now I also want to save a version of this that is the regular image. So I'll go image to compositor, image, save as image, and I'll, I will delete the Z Pass part. So now that we have saved a copy of our image, as well as a copy of the Z-Pass. We are going to jump over to After Effects. So I have already loaded these files into After Effects, and I'm going to take this and create a new comp with it. And I'm going to change the color depth to eight bits per channel or sixteen bits per channel. I'm going to drop the Z pass on top, and I'm going to. I have this dust file that I'm going to drop in underneath the Z pass. The order of these is very important. On the Z-Pass, I am going to add color correction, exposure. And I should mention that if you want a more detailed description of, of how, to, how to use the Z-Pass in After Effects, you should check out the video Copilot tutorial on this topic. I will include a link below this video. So we will decrease, so we will decrease the gamma to zero. Now you can see as we use the exposure, different pieces come into focus. Let's duplicate this and we 
we get even more pieces that are appearing or disappearing. Now, just to show you why we changed this to 16 bits per channel, if I change this to 8, you start to see these very harsh areas where there is there is a clear difference between one color to the next and this will create this will look odd in our in our final composition but if we move it up to 16 or or even 32 you see that it, it disappears and there's a much better gradient on the pieces so the next step is on the footage that we want to composite we will add a track mat luma inverted and if I solo just this piece, you can see how it interacts with the Z-Pass. So the objects that are very close, we have our black because we don't show any of the dust because the piece is in front of it. Whereas pieces toward the back look as if the dust is covering them. Take the solo off, and now you have a much better integration of the dust and the original footage. So great. We understand now how to create the Z-Pass and how to use it in a compositor. But how do we output an animation? And there are two ways that, that we can do this. One is... You could select image, put it into the composite, render the animation as you normally would, and then switch it over to Z-Pass and render that animation. But that would then require you to render every frame twice, because as, as I showed you, whenever you render the Z-Pass, it renders both the original frame and then it puts the Z-Pass over top. So an alternative way is to render both at once. So again, in the compositor, we will add an output node called file output. And in this case, I would put the image for my Z pass into the file output. I'll choose where to save that folder. Now the, the original frame will be saved according to your settings in the render panel. And your Z pass will be saved according to the settings in the file output. And in this way, you will only have to render each frame once. So that's all that's required to do a Z-Pass. So those are the steps to creating a Z-Pass. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments in the section below. Thanks for watching.